Welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 22. Today is Altus Plateau West. Now we're starting from the abandoned coffin site of Grace and we're getting this Smith and Stone 5 that is between these two carriages. Now that enemy there is an omen enemy. They can drop the weapon that they're wielding which can be either the omen cleaver or the warped axe and you can tell what one it is if it's a cleaver or an axe. Heading northwest on this sort of like, so there's kind of like an implied path that you can see. There is a scarab and we're going to kill that to get the Sacred Order, Ash of War. Now, just quickly, if this is the first time you're watching any of these videos, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you've got any tips of your own, stick them in the pinned tips comment, that way other people can look over shit that you've got to say. But otherwise, we are now at the Perfumer's Ruins, and this is the first time we're encountering the Perfumer enemies, essentially. Now, these guys can effectively just drop their, they don't have any weapons to drop, they just drop their armor set. Um, and they can also deal like a, fair amount of damage and they can like kind of make a shield or whatever but you know what it's nothing that ground slam can't take care of it's the depraved perfumers that are the thing that you need to watch out for and we'll get to them later on in this episode so this guy is an omen killer omen killers are nothing compared to the power of our ass this one specifically drops its full armor set um it's a fixed set of drops, so you don't have to farm it, which is nice. Um, in this other Dark Souls 3 chest, you get in a cookbook, there's a perfume bottle, there's another one of those hidden just on the platform above you, and as you can see, there's the Omen Killer set. Uh, actually, not a bad set for its weight. Um, it's one of the lighter sets, but it has some pretty respectable defenses, and you get the headpiece for it a little later on inside Lane Dell. Aye. Picking up another crafting item there, and I think, after grabbing the item on the ledge, we'll be heading down to the unsightly catacombs, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, yeah, I am no, mistaken. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, he we're heading down to get the perfumer's uh, talisman. And as you saw, we also got that second perfumer bottle. Now, just quickly, in addition to the perfumer's set, so that's the head, robes, gloves, and sarong, they can also drop the perfumer's shield, uh, three like Miranda powers, budding cave moss, and altus blooms. Now, this is the item that's hidden on the ledge, and that is a Golden Rune 5. So, so really not worth picking up at this stage in the game. I, I, I mean, it's, it's free, right? It's free money. I, I guess it's money. It's like finding a fiver on the floor. Ah, yeah. you're not going to not pick it up. So, using two, uh, two stone sword keys to access uh, the unsightly catacombs. Now, this is kind of unique. Um, because it's not a skeleton catacomb, and it's not an empty catacomb, it's a misbegotten catacomb that's uh, oh, the difference variety here. yeah <laughs> so these guys can drop the iron cleaver the misbegotten short bow or the long half axe depending on what version you're fighting so if it's using that weapon that's what's going to drop so these things will drop the cleaver the ones that are flying and have the bow can drop the bow and the big ones with axe can drop the long half axe they can also drop old fangs as well uh that being a crafting item but uh, again there's just nothing in this area that can that can't that can stand up to either the katanas or the power of our arse. So particularly these guys are very weak to our arse specifically. So odd. Yeah, because where a normal enemy gets flattened, these things get flung halfway across the continent. So. Yeah, it's really weird actually that that's the case. But we picked up a glove wart on that little bit behind there. And we're just make, gonna make our way just generally through this area. It's not a particularly difficult uh catacomb. I guess there's some dogs here, uh, and this guy's like hiding in the corner. But again, so long as you've got ground slam on, you're not going to have any issues. As you and can if see you are having actually... issues, then you need to put ground slam on because you're. If you have issues, you're just not using ground slam. Is the issue accurate? No. Um, as you can see there, the after hitting it with the ground slam, we uh, grab the winged misbegotten ashes down here. By the way, they're not great, but it's part of the collection, so we need to pick it up. But yep. for that taller misbegotten, um, your ground slam didn't actually break its poise, it just knocked it over. Following it up with the charged R2 from a katana did break its poise. So, oh, and here's an omen wielding the omen cleaver. Yep. Um, and again, ground slam perfectly good against these guys as well. Now, I actually to have to... Uh, so I... There was a, an item there that I forgot to grab before I, f I accidentally fell off the edge, so I need to go back up and grab it. Um, but pulled the lever, or maybe I did grab it. But anyway, pulled the lever, and um, nope, I didn't grab it. So that yeah, this was the item that <laughs> I accidentally didn't grab after falling down from kill killing the omen. 
But that was the Prattle and Pate that we just picked up, so it's just a little item that when you use it, it will create like a sound emote. Um, so it was a noisy uh, piece of nothing. Yep, there is one There is one that is relevant, and it's the your beautiful Prattle and Pate that you use for a, a quest, but otherwise they're just meant as like a PvP, speak to other players type thing. So now we are fighting against uh, Perfumer, Perfumer Trisha and the Misbegotten Warrior. Now, like every boss, we are putting on Golden Vow, we are putting on our Physic Flask to get our HP regen and our Bubble Shield, and then we're just going to town with our arse. Uh, now, finally, we get to summon the Mimic Tier for a boss. This is the first boss that we get to summon the Mimic Tier for, and as you can see, the Mimic Tier is just awesome. Just it does what? exactly what you need to do. We summoned it for the Gargoyles as well. Oh, yeah, actually, we did summon it for the Gargoyles. Good point. But this is the one where it makes a considerable difference because, as you can see, having two of us made that duo fight into two solo fights and therefore yeah. way more manageable. Um, again, you really shouldn't have any issues with that fight. Ground Slam, Bleed. It's, pre it's genuinely... It's, it covers 80 to 85% of everything in this game, hilariously. Now, for, fight, for beating that fight, we got the Perfumer Trisha... Um, Ash. What are, they what are they called? Oh my god. Spirit Ash. Oh my god, Spirit Ash, yeah. So we got Perfumer Treasure. Actually, one of the slightly better ones in the game because Perfumer Treasure can actually give you a little bubble shield. So that means that you will take massively reduced damage for like a hit. And it can put it on multiple times a fight. So actually, kind of cool. Now, there's that, those uh, little white flowers, we're going to mention it every time. Those are Michaela's lilies. Pick them up. Because they do become lilies. relevant. They're Trina's lilies. Oh, Trina's lilies, sorry. Pick up the Trina's lilies. So now we are in... Oh, fuck, I can't remember what this place is called. It's a cave on a lake. I can't we're, remember. Yeah, we're off the top lake of Lakeside head either. cave, question mark. I, forgot, I wasn't paying attention. But we did put on Sacred Blade, uh, because there is a bunch of skeletons in here, uh, such as this guy. Now, like all the skeletons, um, they can drop the... Okay, well, specifically, this, there's a bunch of different skeletons, right? But I've already mentioned it, and there's some stuff to annotate it now. So if I, get a, if I get a moment, I'll tell you what the skeletons drop. Point is, Lost Ash of War in that box, Rejuvenating Bolluses. Also in the box, that's used for Death Blight build-up reduction. So they're actually pretty useful having the Rejuvenating Bolluses. Well, as you can see, Sacred Blade just make short work of like every single skeleton now actually specifically those skeletons there with the curved swords that is the um fuck what are they what ones are they the bandit curved swords they're pretty yeah good. skeletal bandit it can drop the bandit's curved sword and um, one of the better curved swords in the game it's long it hits hard it's fast um takes ashes of war and infusion as well as you can see there we got the black hood that's one of the pieces that meshes well with the bandit set so if you're interested in your fashion souls that's where you get that Uh, so some more skeletons in here. Um, I don't think the skeletons with the crossbow actually drop that. I've never had one drop it. I could be wrong. No. This one though drops the Executioner's Great Axe, which is yep. rare, it's hard to get, and it hits really hard, especially on reposts and backstabs. So if you want a big weapon that hits like a fucking truck, go farm one of those guys. But there is an easier one to farm over in uh, Caelid. So we've got the Raptor Talons. And some Dragon Moon Grease. The Raptor's Talons are a fantastic weapon. They're a claw type weapon. Um, they have unique R2s that hit multiple times. They take bleed infusions exceptionally well. Um, pair well with anything that boosts your jumping attack damage. Um, generally fucking fantastic. They're an awesome weapon. So here we get the Raptor's Black Feathers and the Skeletal Mask. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Raptor's Black Feathers is an armor set that increases your jump attack power. Yeah, speaking of, you can also stack it with the Claw Talisman and the Raptor's Talons, and you can get some very respectable jump attack damage out of it, like, to an insane degree. Now here, we're about to fight Necromancer Garrus. Uh, uh, hilariously, he actually hits surprisingly hard if he does hit you, um, so just be aware of the amount of damage that he can actually put out. Uh, so, you know, keep your health up and obviously avoid that attack because theoretically, if you've not been leveling Vigor very much, he could actually massively annihilate you with that attack. But otherwise, summon the Mimic Tear and get your fucking ass slams in. 
and you shouldn't really be having a problem with just this just guy, just a fucking guy. But um, like, there's just not really. So you get the family heads weapon for that. So that's the weapon that he was using. Yeah, it's but, a flail that can summon skulls. It's fine, I guess. Yeah. Now this whole area, this um, cave system, I suppose, is interesting because it actually has two bosses. Now, we're about to fight a very irritating boss that the Mimic tier is fine with, but there's m different ways you can deal with this boss. Now, we're actually going to put the imps back on. And the reason for this is that this boss is fucking invisible. Now, you can come back here once you get the... Um, oh, there's a, what's the torch called? Sentry's torch. The Sentry's torch, which will show... Um, the locate like the once you're if you're using the torch this guy will be visible but if we're going to be using the imps they there's two of them and they attack very quickly and they're very aggressive so as a result this will keep the like they can see the assassin so this will keep the assassin on its toes and from time to time he the assassin will become visible and then you can start getting your hits in but actually, I mean, theoretically, the imps could probably solo the assassin. Um, if you just run I mean, about yeah, enough. they stand a pretty decent chance of it. Um, if you do want to fight her without the sentry's torch and your spirit ashes are having a hard time tracking her, you can actually see her footsteps in the water. You can see when she's moving. Um, it's hard to fight her that way. I'm not going to lie to you and say that, oh, that's the easy way to do it because it just isn't. But that is something that does happen, so if you are standing in the water, she's a lot easier to find. Now, what you actually could also have done here is summon the boys. Um, if you summoned the, uh, what are they called? The Great Shield Soldiers Ashes? There's five of them, and they just go to town on the, <laughs> on the Black Knife Assassins. <laughs> oh, there. yes, they do. They I'm are so sad you didn't include that footage. <laughs> well, we, we do for the next Black Knife Assassin that we fight. Uh... We just tried it as a joke for that one, and it turns out that the boys are actually very, very good at fighting Black Knife Assassins. So uh, you could have summoned the the Great Shield Soldiers' Ashes, and they would have done a great job as well. Basically, just any ash that's like a bunch of enemies that can pretty much gang up on the assassin. Because again, the assassin is so. There's the rulers set right there, the mask and the robe. But again, the assassin is one of those enemies that dodges a lot, like with the Nox twins that we spoke about. Now, yeah. for whatever reason I'm fighting this dragon, I don't know why, because um, you can't actually kill it, because it gets to a certain amount of HP and then just goes away. So, for some reason, uh, what you're actually meant to do here is... Uh, oh, I think it was just to demonstrate that it goes away. That was probably it. That and the fact that your method for killing the ancient dragon-type dragons is to bloody slash the face, because it does very consistent high damage. This and is it's the true. same technique yeah. we use on it later on when we actually uh, take it out in its proper location. But I do want to mention quickly that we got the Concealing Veil Talisman from the Black Knife Assassin in the cave. Um, picking up that Golden Seed over there is our next task. Um, the Concealing Veil actually obscures you from enemy vision. So the further you are away and when you crouch, you are harder for enemies to detect. That includes other players in PvP. So, what we're doing just now, so it's kind of like the Thief's Ring in Dark Souls 1, if anyone remembers that, and that was a very good item. But, what we're doing just now is we are just, there's a couple of items that we're making a beeline for, so this isn't technically, like, proper progression, this is just a case of, like, right, we want to get the map fragment in this area, so we're kind of going to this sort of crossroads area, you'll see the Golden Seed, you'll see to the left, you'll see the, the Grace to your right, and then this is where you know that you're going the right direction. So we're just going to pick up this golden seed. But the map fragment for this area is up this road. And as a result, it's going to make navigating this area a lot easier if we actually have the map. So we're going to just grab the map and then go back to the um, the Erd Tree Grazing Hill. Uh, oh no, it's Altus Plateau. Oh no, it is the Erd Tree Grazing Hill. Never mind. So we're going to go back to the Erd Tree Grazing Hill. And um, that way we've got the map for this area. When we At least part of this them. area. Yeah, yeah. The section that we'll be clearing in this episode. So here's Raya. Um, as we showed you in a previous part, the last part, as a matter of fact, um, we spoke to her in Leonia. She now has the ability to teleport you straight to the Volcano Manor, which is what we're going to do. Yes. Here you are. 
we've covered a lot of the distance on the map, and I think what we're going to do is probably go grab the map fragment for this area yes. because it's very close to the entrance. We'll be grabbing the map fragment, grabbing a grace, and then uh, warping back to a tree gazing hill as we did before. Oh, as well so, as the golden seed up on this hill. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the map that we get from this shows that it like that that bit that was kind of obscured i'm pretty sure that this part of the map this map that we're going to get actually then unlocks the full map for all of altus um so we can actually see where we are which is exactly why we wanted to do this i am fairly certain if anybody can confirm or deny on an earlier patch of the game if raya teleported you to volcano manor you couldn't leave it can anybody confirm with a hundred percent certainty if that is the case or not because i am certain you weren't able to do this on an early patch of the game but you can do it now, and that is the Mount Gelmer map, which we definitely want for when we're actually coming to tackle Mount Gelmer. And uh, now we're going to grab this Grace and then warp back to the Erdtree Graz Grazing Hill, where we can actually start working our way through Altus. But now we've picked up those Golden Seeds as well, we have an incidental extra flask charge we can use. And as you can see, there we go, there's the full map for all of Altus, which is, um, which is very nice and comfy. So we're going to start with the... Um, Eastmost part of Altus, and right away here's Millicent. So exhaust Millicent's dialogue. Hopefully, hopefully you've done Millicent's quest up to this point. And she's actually here, but yeah, just uh, keep talking to her until she repeats herself. He's very easy to miss in this location because she kind of oh, blends in with the background. Um, yeah, she's just, just kind of there, you know. Yeah, she is next to the Tree Gazing Hill. So um, this boss, I'm really not going to talk about that much. It's a Tibia Mariner. This one can sum up a big skeleton, which you'll see it do in a second. But Millicent's quest, um, if you progressed everything properly in the Caled part, which we have a full guide for, um, she will appear there. And your next task for her is to clear the Shaded Castle and get her arm back. So just to make a point here, when it comes to this boss, you actually should have put Sacred Blade up when you when the, you last teleported back to the Erdtree Grazing Hill before you came here like a minute ago. You should have put Sacred Blade... Oh, I did put Sacred Blade on. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I guess I never <laughs> took it off, actually. But yeah, okay, so we've got Sacred Blade on. Never mind. But as th this boss is just one of those... The, the tip is, put Sacred Blade on, it dies to Sacred Blade. Like, there's nothing really else I can tell you. That's how you kill this boss. Um... There you go, boss done. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it Easy feels kind, Yeah, it feels kind of cheap saying, like, oh, that's how you kill it, but some some enemies in this game, like, there's just a technique that is so overwhelmingly good that that's it. And for that, we get a death route, and we also got the something skeleton ashes. It, no, it was the Tibia Summons spell. Oh, that was it. Yes, um, yes. And it's really, really bad. <laughs> don't waste your time it never hits anything when it does hit it's really but like the damage is really low just don't waste your fucking fp on it it's honestly pointless now we're just going through this sort of overall ruins area and picking up what we can we've picked up some smithing stones and that i guess that'd be the southwest corner of this area um golden rune seven just there just, just f follow the exact path that we've been following. Pick up exactly what we're picking up. And right up here is... Uh, oh, I can't remember what's this, actually. Dappled dappled white cured meat. I'm sure that'll be and highly I relevant. I'm never going to use. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> another one of those skeletal bandits there. That's another one that can drop the bandit's curved sword. Again, excellent weapon. I highly recommend it, basically, for every build. Now, um, most of the skeletons that you see... Uh, so, these are the... Uh, I think these are the skeletons that can drop... Uh, the ones with the shield can drop the... Um, the Sun Realm shield. And then we saw one that had the the Reaper. The, so, the Grave Scythe. So, the ones that drop the Scythe, drop the Scythe. The ones that drop the Great Axe, drop the Executioner's Great Axe. The ones that drop the glaive drop. Now the glaive is like a spear with a long curved tip. The 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 skeletons that have just the spear without the long curved tip, they don't drop that. There is no skeleton spear weapon. So just so the ones that the tibia mariner summons and stuff like that, they just don't actually drop anything. Um, and then there's the skeletons that seem to be exclusively in the catacombs that either drop the long bow, the scimitar, or the gross messer. So that's like the big curved sword. Which was said multiple times, so hopefully you've kind of picked all that up by now. 
And here we are in the Wyndham Catacombs. This one's kind of an interesting one. I think this is imps, but also knights and occasionally crabs? Question mark? Uh, yes, there is indeed Lindell knights in here. And imps and knights, yes. Now, before so, you get to the bottom of that lift, you want to jump off behind yeah. you. And there's a, an additional glove wall up there, so well worth having. And here are some imps, which are everyone's favourite ambushing enemy. Um, so you've got and to be everyone's favourite spirit, Ash. Yeah. Um, like, I'd say, I'd say I kind of prefer... Like, the, the, the Mimic tier is definitely more fun, but in, like, a weird conceptual way, I think I sort of prefer the imps. Just because of, like how good they are without being strictly overpowered if you get what because the 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 mimic tier is just overpowered yeah yeah like the mimic tier is the best but the best doesn't necessarily mean the most fun or indeed your favorite like my favorite's the bodies they're not good versus everything but where they are good they're great no i now <laughs> so just to cover some cover our tracks again with the imps the best way of dealing with the imps is to use guard counters. Keep your guard up when the imps hit your shield, hit R2, and then immediately you'll swing your weapon as a guard counter move, and that will do a ton of damage and knock the imp down where you can counter them. The imps also drop the fort hatchet if they're using it, the fort greatsword if they're using it, pretty easy to spot which one's what. They can also drop the imp heads, so there's four, the cat, the fang, the long tongue, the wolf, and then they can drop smoldering butterflies, glitzone fireflies, fog balloons, mushrooms, and various smith and stones, depending on where you are in the game. Ah, <sighs> right. So these like weird muck men, uh, I mean, they'll probably drop something, but they don't drop any weapons. So that's why we only talk about the enemy drops when they drop equipment, uh, like actual relevant things, because otherwise they're just going to drop either consumables or crafting items. And who gives a shit at that point? Speaking of enemies who can drop their gear, though, we have a Lindell yes. Knight. This is a Lindell Knight. They can kind of, just like the Cuckoo Knights, just like the Red Main Knights, just like the Lindell, uh, the, the sort of the Godric Knights, they can drop the armor set, that being the helm, the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves, they can drop the knight's great sword if they're using the great sword, they can drop the partisan if they're using the partisan, they can drop the great bow if they're using the great bow, and they can drop the golden great shield if they're wielding it. But they don't drop the long sword weapon that they're using, seemingly. I guess we must pick that up at some other point in the game. What, the sword it was just wielding? Yeah. That is the knight's great sword. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Man, I'm yeah. full of shit. <laughs> Very important item behind this stone sword key door. It's the lightning scorpion charm. We will be making use of that later on because that's one of the key components to the fuck you knight's cavalry strategy. Yes, yes, because they are weak to lightning. So let's get some more fucking damage on those bastards. <laughs> so trying to avoid this uh, ambush from this particular imp. Yeah, because in this room is also, as you can see, a Lindell Knight, and fighting an imp and a Lindell Knight, that's no bueno, so you want nah, to take nah. care of the imp as quickly as you can. Yeah, absolutely fuck that for an encounter. Very odd that there's Lindell Knights down here just randomly. Because they are quite tough, strictly speaking. I mean, they're effectively, what, um, Lothric Knights? <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's the exact same moveset as Lothric Knights. Some of their moves are, that's, that's for damn sure. Like the shield bash and the um like the big sweeps that they've got. Yeah. Very Lothric Knight coded. Um yeah, God, this one's giving you some shit today. I like. know, <laughs> I know. I you know that last hit I was like, fuck it, I'm just trading the last hit, I don't care. <laughs> uh Yeah, that was the uh lever to open the door to the boss. Um and for this little platform section, I think what we've got to do is actually run across and I don't think you can make it in time so you've got to go into the room with a little imp wait for the floor to go back down and then jump back off onto it again and I think yeah. we're going underneath it after that I think we are too, yeah so it'll be drop down, jump off, roll under fish bash bosh and uh, is, there not, is there a crab in this bit? yeah I think there is, I think some crabs appear right now yeah, giant yeah. enemy crab. And there are floor traps in this section that shoot lightning arrows from the ceiling. Um, so if the tra crab, for whatever reason, is giving you trouble, you can kill it with a floor trap, which I think we might be showing you. Yeah. And we also pick up uh, the Dragon Apostles cookbook as well. 
Yeah, I think that's one, one of the one ones that either gives you um, lightning pots as a throwable. Pass. Couldn't tell you, but maybe. I think it is. Um, dragon stuff tends to be lightning stuff in Elden Ring. Counter to everything Dark Souls taught us for the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, so I think this is us heading essentially straight back to the start just to rest and then because obviously the boss was right at the start we can now go to the boss because we've cleared out the whole uh the whole dungeon i guess yeah oh i um, could not tell you what this boss is i have no idea a, a tree burial watchdog but this one has lightning powers right and also the floor's covered in water so you know it's aoe's are going to be bigger akin to the sanctuary guardians lightning aoe's um, but as you saw, we put on the Physic, we put on a uh, Golden Vow, and then we just summon the Mimic Tear, and the Mimic Tear just gets stuck right in. And you're both ground slamming it, so this is going to last all of, what, 20 seconds? It's give or take, yeah. Yeah. As we said, when we pick the Mimic Tear up, the rest of the game gets considerably easier now. Look at, look at the fucking damage ground slam's doing, and there's two of us. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Easy don't peasy. use the Mimic. Just don't. <laughs> if you want to have fun, just stop using him. Because <laughs> he's just that good. So we got another Glove Warp Picker, Bell Baron. Um, I think that was the, the first one. So I think that gives us... I'm actually not sure if that was the first one or not. I couldn't tell because it was uh, the writing was small. But the point is, is we can hand that to the Twin Maiden Husks in the Round Table Hold. And then she'll start selling um, the, the correct level of glove wart in the shop yeah that one's for ghost uh, no sorry grave glove warts ones twos and threes i think right. and in the knockron part we picked up the ghost glove wart one for ones twos and threes weird that they so, give you the the better one first yeah i was thinking that that's what i think that was what was uh kind of throwing me off actually and also it's so unnecessary because you get so many in the game that you're just it's and you only use one to level up so we got barrage uh from that uh, scarab, and then that's that's a a bow ash of war that lets you um, fire out a bunch of bunch of arrows in quick succession. And then now this where we are just now is the start of Mount Gelmir. There's, Mount Gelmir has a top half and a bottom half. This is the start of the bottom half, but we're just running in here just quickly to grab the golden seed because there's no enemies, so we might as well. Yeah, now, Altus and Gelmir kind of weigh you down with golden seeds. Yes, so. Uh, it's going to say back to the air tree gate grazing hill, but we're actually going to go back to the round table hold, probably upgrade our weapon if we can, level up if we can. You know, the usual yada yada. Yeah, the leveling up montage, so to speak. Although I don't really know why we're investing more in the katanas at this point, because we're very, very close to getting our uh, our forever weapon. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. Um, oh, yeah. We're yes. just leveling up the boys, because fuck oh, it. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, genuinely, yeah. the Great Shield Soldier's Ashes does ha p f For one boss in particular, fantastic. But we'll get they to that when we get there. They can't do anything to them. It's amazing. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> so, back to the Air Tree Grazing Hill, and now we're going to start on all, like, the. I guess the east part of Altus, or the slightly less east part of Altus, question mark. Um, effectively just up this side, there's kind of like a a big valley that leads up to the Shaded Castle. So we're going to go that way, and then we're going to do the Shaded Castle. Now, yeah, what about this the... scarab that's coming up it is uh, the one that drops Bloodblade. Now, this is something that we use extensively in the guide. Uh, because Bloodblade is fucking broken, and it's extremely good for Shaded Castle. Absolutely the best option that I have found for beating the depraved perfumers by a gigantic margin, at least based on the build that we currently have, because it slots perfectly into the build that we currently have, and the depraved perfumers are a fucking nightmare to deal with. But a little bit less of a nightmare if you have Bloodblade, so remember to pick that up. So ignoring all those fucking enemies. Yeah, now it's old Altus Tunnel time, and you're about to see us do something strange for this guide, and that is we're riding this lift down, because this is one of the few 
um, tunnels that does not have anything on the little windy path to the bottom. Correct. Correct. <laughs> but you should you should be in the you should still be in the habit of going down the side. But still, still. Yeah, he was about to use a flamethrower on you, and all of these barrels could explode. So, get in there and ground slam him before he has a chance to, you know, kamikaze you. Yes, yes. Now, um, as with all the the minor enemies, they can drop the digger staff, um, somber smithing stones, apparently. Uh, oh no, no, these are these aren't the miners. These are the different ones because these are the ones that drop the pickaxe, actually. Yeah, they're not the glintstone miners, they're just the regular These are the mi miners. Yeah. Right, yes, yes. So, uh, these can drop the pickaxe, and then they drop, like, a just... So, Bolt Drake Talisman, uh, extra lightning defense. Um, and that's the, obviously the improved version of the, the other Bolt Drake Talisman. But specifically, yeah, these are the uh, the normal miners, as opposed to the diggers, I guess, have made a, a, dis a distinction there. But aside from the pickaxe, they can drop explosive stones, explosive stone clumps, poison stoned, uh, sorry, poison, poison stone, poison stone clumps, although apparently only drop in the sealed tunnel. Uh, there's a smith and stone five in the wall just there, picking up a golden rune six. And now there's a bit of a, bit of a, a, a f this encounter is a pain in the ass. You do not want to drop down here willy nilly. You really want to be baiting out the enemies that we're baiting out because Otherwise, you're dropping down and you're being swarmed by Lindell Knights. And then you're being... Uh, there's a bunch of explosive barrels and dogs also. So I'm telling you, drop down onto this bit here. Because what it means is that the Lindell Knight needs to go up the ladder and then go around the rafters and then drop down in order to fight you. So in that process, you can just pepper it with like whatever ranged attack that you've got. And as you can see, the bow once again paying dividends. Yep, it just absolutely. It basically cleaned him up before he was even able to get to us. And since there are two of them, there's the second one. Since there are two of them, fighting two of them at once is kind of a pain in the ass. So we've done everything in our power to avoid exactly that from happening. Not to mention the fact that there are also dogs and exploding barrels that you can use to deal a bit of damage to them if you can hit it before it gets onto the ladder. Really, the main thing is getting rid of the Lindell Knights. The other stuff, Aslam will be able to take care of, but because the Lindell Knights have big shields, Aslam isn't, like, guaranteed to get them every single time. Uh, also, when it comes to the Miners, they can drop uh, various Smith and Stones, uh, depending on the level of the game. So they'll, you'll, they'll probably drop, like, Smith and Stone 3 or 4s in here, but you really, you really, I mean, I don't think you're trying to kill Miners to farm Smith and Stones. They can also drop no gravel real. stones and cracked crystals. Oh, but that's only the ones with glowing rock in the backpacks, so never mind. The ones in here are just dropping pickaxes and explosive stones by the looks of it. Yeah. I mean, there's no real need to farm for smithing stones because the bell bearings exist. Exactly. So once you reach certain thresholds in the game, like certain points in progression, you can just buy any, any size of smithing stone. Uh, regular or somber that you'd need to upgrade your weapon so just keep that in mind don't waste your time farming when you can just use what you've got wait until you get the next bell bearing and then level the gear up that you actually want to use exactly now hopefully you've been paying attention again keep as we've said in part zero keep visual attention of all the different things that we are picking up from the walls we're not we are not mentioning verbally every single time we pick up a smith and stone from the wall so Make sure to keep very good attention to what we are picking up because there is a lot of Smith and Stone Fives in this area and that is obviously going to be relevant. So pay very close attention to everything that we are doing in this area. But otherwise, that is that uh, encounter taken care of finally and now we can move on to the boss. And this is, I want to say, two trolls. Is that even a no, thing? Is that, is that a boss? it's no. just the one troll but there's a bunch of exploding barrels in the room. Oh, epic. That means literally nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we do every time. And that's put on Golden Vow, put on our Physic Flask, summon the Mimic Tear, and then start jumping on its feet. That's, pre that's pretty much all we're going to be doing. Yep, basically. Um, now, if you had any um, large glintstone scraps, you could do the same thing we, do, we did to the first one of these that we fought. Um, you could just keep throwing those at it until its stance breaks and then annihilate it, but at this stage in the game, we're so well geared that we don't need to rely on techniques like that. 
Nah, two ass slams and it's just fucking game over for this guy, so. And that's all she wrote. It's it's very interesting because a lot of her techniques, it is just like, I, it just has such extreme coverage that the strategy is just keep doing what you're doing because you're just going to either bleed it to death, frost it to death, Mimic Tear is going to take care of it, or you're just going to break its poise using Ass Slam. And like I said, it just has such crazy coverage that pretty much every boss dies to that combination of things, aside from a specific few bosses, in which case we have like a backup in our pocket. So, yeah, um, you should be having I wouldn't even time. call our alternate strategies backups. They're just, oh, right, they're more effective than the method that we use on everything else. But that's not to say that the method that we use for everything else wouldn't work. Like, you yeah, could make true, it yeah, work. Yeah. It's just going to be a struggle. So we're just trying something else out that's maybe more efficient or in a lot of instances, more fun. So here we are at Shaded Castle. Now we are uh, just going to go around the outskirts of this area and uh, pick up what we can. Uh, there's a bunch of Miranda flowers and stuff. Just ignore them. I mean, we're never going to... I don't know what you expect to find in those things. Just don't even bother fighting them. Uh, but there is a Starlight Shards up around the back of this thing. So we're going to pick that up just quickly. I had no idea this was here for the longest time, by the way. I just never thought to go to this side of Shaded Castle because there's naff all else here. Nah, there really isn't a lot in this part. Uh, now, there is a golem coming up. Now, uh, the golems can drop the halberd if they're using it, the golem great bow if they're using it, and then they can drop great arrows, smith and stones, golem great arrows, and golem magic arrows. Except there's only one that drops golem magic arrows. But there is also an NPC here that we want to bait away from the golem that way we're not fighting both of them at the same time. Now, this NPC actually drops a really fantastic weapon being the ant spur rapier, which is a rapier that has uh, inherent... Uh, Scarlet Rot build-up. So, obviously, we have uh, Rot Breath for when that becomes relevant, but if you don't have Rot Breath, or the capabilities using Rot Breath, you probably have access to the Antsper Rapier, and you'll even need to upgrade that if literally the only point of it is to just put Rot on something. So, you can just have that in your back pocket if something's weak to Rot, but has, like, a lot of HP. Bang, 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 get it rotted, and then just fuck off and wait for it to die. Um, also, you don't need to fight this golem because it doesn't actually drop anything, and that's what that cut was. I was like, does this drop something? It doesn't, so just run past it. Aye, speaking about the Answer Rapier a little more, the requirements for it are actually really reasonable. I think it's 10 strength, 20 dex. Um, it's not hard to achieve, basically, for any character. Um, and on top of that, it's also, despite having Scarlet Rot inherently, it is infusable. So you could make it a blood antsper rapier, a poison antsper rapier to get multiple status effects at once, which is... This is true. Um, it just makes it even more exceptional than it already is. But for now, jumping on that little rock takes us into the Shaded Castle and onto the First Grace. Now, this place is kind of a pain in the ass, As Tony mentioned, That there are depraved perfumers in here. And those things fucking suck. But thankfully, we have Bloodblade. Yeah, so what you're going to do is you're going to try using anything other than Bloodblade to see and see how you deal with these perfumers. And then you're going to put Bloodblade on because I want you to just truly fucking appreciate the depths of depravity I went through trying to figure out what the best thing for killing these fucking things are. And it is Bloodblade, okay? So it's... Because the thing is, is that they kind of do this little hop about thing that makes them... like they've, they've got quite a lot of health for any of your physical attacks. But for Bloodblade specifically... Um, it does, it kills them in three shots, it can bleed them, it tracks them, it's got a ton of range, so yeah, it's, it's very, very good. You just need to be wary because Bloodblade does drain a little bit of your health on the first use of Bloodblade. If you keep spamming it past that first use, it won't, it won't drain it every single time you use it, but every time you start a new cycle of Bloodblade, it'll take a little bit of your health. So just, uh, keep that in mind, and then we also got the champion song painting from that wooden structure. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, um, you, you, you want to be baiting these depraved perfumers out as much as possible. Do not run in willy-nilly if you get surrounded by even two of those fucking things. They're just going to go, ha-ha, stupid perfume attack, and immediately kill you regardless of what your fucking health is, right? So be wary of these fucking perfumers because I was tearing my hair out trying to fight these fucking things. It's all right. The perfumers aren't real. They can't hurt you. 
Yeah, they're um, not currently in the room with me, so... <laughs> No, the um, as you said, the perfumers can dodge away. They can also heal, which is kind of a pain in the ass. And their perfume attacks, their um, spark aromatic attacks, hit really hard, like disproportionately hard for this yeah. stage in the game. Um, but since you've spoken about them so much, do you have their drops? Oh, good point, yes. So the depraved perfumers can drop the depraved perfumer set. So that's the head, scarf, robe, gloves, trousers. They can drop the depraved perfumer shield, but that's only the ones that wield it, obviously, just like the other perfumers. And the budding cave moss, all its blooms, and Miranda powers, powders. So now we're in this little bit here that has a lot of the basilisks. Now, um, as uh, Josh was saying, they only have one attack, or that that's just pounce at you and like blow some uh, death blight clouds at you. So literally just run past them. They are not a threat, at least not in this big wide open area anyway. Yeah, there's one specific room where those things are a threat, but we have a solution for that as well in our back pocket, so. Yeah. Now the, You'll know uh, it when you see it. <laughs> the good So the good news again about why Bloodblade is good against the Brave Perfumers is because you can keep a distance far enough away that their spark aromatic can't hit you. And I mean, you need to understand this attack does so much fucking damage. Uh, not only that, Bloodblade keeps them, like, uh, it, like, knocks them back on hit, which then stops them from casting their Spark Aromatic. So it really covers every fucking scenario that these Depraved Perfumers are, like, an issue with. So, I uh, you are welcome. Likewise, um, Reduvia's Bloodblade will do largely the same thing. So if you have been using Reduvia for the Bloodblade effect up to this point and you've chosen to upgrade it, why wouldn't you, by the way? It's an excellent weapon. Um, you can also use Reduvia to achieve the same end. This is true. However, Reduvia's Bloodblade does have a, 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 a smaller range, so it does put you a little bit um, like a, the danger zone of the Spark Aromatic attack. Otherwise, true. though... We are on it doesn't take any of your wall. health, though, which is nice. That is that that is nice, admittedly. <laughs> you can kind of spam it a bit better. But we're on the northern wall, and this bit is a little bit dicey, so just bang down here, grab that Smith and Stone 5, and then get the fuck out of here before you get hit off all these various attacks that are going to be coming your way. Um, and we're just, I mean, we're just ignoring all these, like, fucking skeleton guys. They don't drop anything, they don't do anything. Just stay away from them. And they're also, yeah. I don't know, they've got like a smelly aura. I, I don't know what the fuck that means. They've just, <laughs> they've just got like a green cloud that isn't poison or anything. They just smell bad. So, uh, because we have heal here as a revenant, as we've uh, shown you before. I mean, you need to be fucking on the ball even when you have heal. But if you cast heal, it will immediately stun this thing. Stick it on its knees, I guess. And, oh god... Ran out of yeah, this this is what happens when you don't <laughs> heal it. Like yeah, yeah. It, you just take the th you know the hundred hand slap. It just gives you it gives you the business. So genuinely, you can... fuck those enemies. Sorry, fuck whoever does it, fuck them. Fuck them and fuck you whoever designed them. No, 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 no. Fuck the guy who put five of them in one place. Fuck all of them. Fuck every. It was probably the same guy. Okay, so now yeah, he was really proud of this one enemy, and he just put it five times in the same spot because Miyazaki said no to putting them all everywhere else. So now we're heading into the inner ring, I guess, of uh, Shade of the Castle, I suppose. And uh, now we're going to take the the northern path again. Now watch out! There's a guy that's going to fucking push you, right? So watch out right here. Uh, he wants to push you down into the bit with the Miranda flowers and stuff. So here we are. We've got a Clean Rot Knight. And uh, these guys can drop the Clean Rot Knight Sword, the Clean Rot Spear, the Halo Scythe, the Clean Rot Helm, like the set rather, which is the Helm, the Armour, the Gauntlets of Greaves. They can drop Trina's Lilies and they can drop Michaela's Lilies. Now we just got the Valkyrie Prosthesis. I cannot say that word. But we've just got that and that is what we'll be given to Millicent later on. Aye, and I think from this point forward we'll just be jumping along, picking up the items along the way until we get to the next grace, and then after that we'll be clearing up this little swamp section. Uh, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Much. Now, honestly, you probably might be better off just grabbing the grace right now, 
Actually, you definitely would be. Um, so you'll see, we're gonna we're gonna grab the grace in a second, right? But you're probably better off grabbing it right now because this next encounter, there's a lot of depraved perfumers up here, and you don't want to die in this part because then it means having to you, come all the way back. You also saw us roll in the swamp there. Uh, largely, you want to avoid that because when you roll in a substance that applies a status effect to you. It continues to build up even after you leave that substance. So that applies for the rot swamps, it applies for the poison swamps. Um, generally, you just want to avoid doing that. So we picked up a perfumer's bottle there. Now, actually, it's important that you kill that um, depraved perfumer first, because what ends up happening is if you come here first, the depraved perfumer actually is walking down this route, follows you, and then jams you between him and the two that we just avoided there. Uh, luckily, you don't need to fight the two there. Um, and if you want, just in case, you could quit out and load back in to make sure they're completely de aggroed from you. Um, so, yeah, don't fight those two either. Uh, but if you kill that one up the stairs first, then you can just run and grab that item next to the two of them and then just run back. But we're doing this little jumper jumperoo here or whatever the fuck, and then we can get the stone sword key. Now, if we had gotten the grace, like I said, we could actually just have warped straight back to the grace. Actually, we might not be able to warp in here, so maybe not. Come to think of it. No, um, you can. You can warp in here. Oh, well, if that's the case, we could have warped straight back to the grace instead of uh, the fucking slogging it via foot like a peasant. Eh, I don't suppose it matters, really. Yeah, I guess not. Um, I think that stone sword key you picked up, by the way, is one of the most hidden items in the entire game. Like, it's really not obvious how to get to that at all. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. Um, okay, so now we can take these roofs, and I think this is like the easy way of getting to the grace, because strictly speaking, yeah, like, the grace is literally here, you should literally have just came first, jumped up these roofs, got the grace, and then went to up the ladder and got the perfume bottle, etc. Yeah, so now, now we have uh, one of the like more a... tricky encounters in this section. Yeah, yeah. There's another, there's another revenant. Also, um, coming here, this bit is actually kind of pointless. Um, official guide stance, don't even do this bit. I think you have to fight a revenant and that guy on the horse. It's for, a, I think it's a dragon wing grease, like literally. Rock grease, yeah, this, uh, it's, that's just not worth it. The ghost glove work forward was dropped off the revenant. Um, if you don't have access to heal, just don't do that part, genuinely. It's just not worth it. It's like logarithms in school. Don't even learn them. Who did you... Base 12? Question mark? That doesn't even exist. You just made that up in your head. Anyway, so now we are um, from the Grace, heading north and up the ladder here. And now we are... This is the last part of Shaded Castle. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's some dogs and shit. As you can see, Bloodblade putting in the work even against things that aren't the Depraved Perfumer. Um, it just, it's generally applicable in a lot of situations. Most enemies can be bled, and therefore Bloodblade is good versus most enemies. Um, yeah, essentially. This enemy here is a page. Yeah, it's a page. Uh, they can drop the entire page set, so that's the hood, the garb, the trousers. They can drop the red brand short bow, despite using a crossbow. Uh, and they can drop perfumer's bolts. Now, the pages are actually quite a fairly tough enemy, um, so just watch out, because they can they actually are, have a surprise amount of health and can deal a surprise amount of damage. Uh, so we picked up perfumer's cookbook uh, just there. Uh, there is also, uh, for whatever reason, a few of like the nobles in, in up, up there. So there's like the noble sorcerer. Um, they can drop the glintstone staff, the aristocrat garb, the brutes, and the headband. Um, and then I think there was also the noble with a hat. So, the noble's S talk, the aristocrat. Arist aristocrat hat and coat. But I. The video's really awesome. throwing a lot of tongue twisters at you, isn't it? It really is. Aristocrat <laughs> is, is barely even a word, right? They need, they need to find a different. <laughs> Aristocrats rich... are barely even people, so it fits them perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Rich cat. Rich cat. Oh my god, I can't even talk. Rich guy hat. And rich guy, there we go, there. There's the aristocrat with a hat. <laughs> Using... <laughs> they can drop the, the coat, the hat, and the airstock. Um, 
on today's episode page. of reading Dr. Seuss with Tony. <laughs> I don't... Uh, so yeah, there was a page. If you can like get the page locked under your ass slams, all good and well. But again, watch out for its attacks. It also does not drop its crossbow or uh, the S. I suppose it is just uses a normal S stock. Um, we've already been over the clean rot knights, so or been over the dogs. Uh, so just what you'll know, just be aware of this particular encounter because you don't want to get caught between a bunch of dogs and the clean rot knights. But again, nothing ass slam can't seem to handle except from when the dog does that like triple bite thing that you can't go of. There we go. Thank you, Aslam. So yeah, you probably just um, probably want to bait the dogs into the building first and then take care of them. Yeah, this What an encounter annoying really. encounter! Oh my god, this is <laughs> pissing me off and I'm watching it! <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Yeah, I was just gonna say, this encounter in general is really just a fuck you to the players, because if you die here, you have to go through everything we've just been through since the grace, because that's the shortcut. So... Yup. <laughs> oh, just fuck, that was annoying. It's no, also you... the last thing you have to do before the boss, as well. <laughs> yeah, well, we do have a, a bit of a an easy way out for that one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just use Blood Blade over and over and over again to kill herself on this wooden bridge because as you can see there's a stake america here which means we can just we just kill ourselves pick up our souls bada bing bada boom we've got all our healing items back so we're all good so now we are about to do um i mean it's effectively the boss is a bell baron hunter and um we already know how to take care of the bell baron hunters except this time we also get to have the mimic deer <laughs> fight alongside us whilst fighting the bell baron hunter so uh, to jog everybody's memory, what we're we going to do, we're going to take our Physic Flask, we're going to take Golden Vow, but when it comes to the Bell Baron Hunters, we are going to Aslam, Aslam, Counter. And that is the technique. Except apparently I'm not doing that. Well, you've got to apply your buffs because you didn't do it before you walked in. Yeah, I don't but know why I didn't do that. After that point... It'll be just a matter of get close to it and presumably so think, ground slam. Yes. Yeah. I, I there think we go. really I was just trying to see how much the mimic tier can take in terms of punishment. Um, it actually genuinely might be um, a better idea to go in without the mimic tier and just do the the general um, technique of just a slam, a slam counter, and just keep doing that because uh, it's you're going to have a hard time actually getting a slams off. But again, as you can see, you can also just spam Blood Blade at this guy once. There's, it's really not that difficult um, because you already have the Aslam technique. But when you've got the Mimic tier, once this thing, once this thing's attention is locked onto the Mimic tier, just spam Blood Blade at it. Fuck it. Um, that's also a fantastic way of killing bosses. But now we are coming back to Millicent, and we are going to give uh, her the um, <coughs> prosthesis that we picked up and uh and then give her that exhaust the dialogue and then we are heading back to church of the plague ah because now we'll be speaking to gowry so on the way there i want to talk a little bit about the weapon we got from the boss it's a legendary weapon the maris executioner's sword um it has an exceptionally good ash of war that can be boosted by all the multi-hit increases damage um talismans and effects in the game including the physic tier and the two talismans um it is exceptionally powerful and you can use it very easily to one shot a lot of the bosses in this game especially on your first like new game cycle so um heading to gallery after handing millicent the prosthesis gives you access to pest threads which again very useful tool can be used to inflict massive damage, and you also get the gesture by finishing his dialogue there. Um, yeah, so just uh, when you speak that, to him, just pick that bottom dialogue choice each time. And uh, now we're just yeah, back to until the Ertree exhausted. Hill. Yes, until exhausted, and then eventually you'll get the, the gesture. But back to the Ertree Grazen Hill, and um, do we go back to the round table? Uh, I guess we don't go back to the round table. I guess yeah, we're just leveling up here. Point. I guess we, yeah, we've not, we've not gotten any more uh, upgrade material or whatever. 
But yeah, um, so we're taking all our taking all our souls, we're leveling up, and that is it for part 22. And okay, there we go, that's Altus West done. Join us in part 23, where we're going to be doing Altus Plateau South. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter, you can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out, and if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined, but the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything! Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.